Let's talk about The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Uh, this is to my shame, I think, only the second Bradbury book I've read. Uh, I read it because I'm reading a few Mars books uh, this month, I guess. I'm going to try to get a video up about how Mars is used in all kinds of different kinds of science fiction. Uh, because there is a really wide range of how Mars, uh, as an imaginative Earth, as an other, other Earth, is used. This is interesting because it doesn't neatly fit into the two types of main Martian story. The main kinds of Martian story, I um, I would say, are Sword and Planet Mars um, and Sci-Fi Mars. And they're both, you know, hey, they're both sci-fi. But what I mean is Sword and Planet is this sort of fantastic, imagined uh, Mars where people walk around. There's dried canals, there's remnants of alien races. You know, John Carter of Mars is an example. Or again... Um, so uh, the way that C.S. Lewis uses Mars and indeed the other planets, this kind of fantastic space. And then there's sci-fi Mars, so something like Kim Stanley Robinson or, or Andy Wiz, The Martian, which hopefully I'll be reviewing this month. Um, and lots of other more, more modern writers who basically see Mars. It's a, it is a fairly sterile and inhospitable planet. It is the actual red ball in the sky, as far as we understand it, in terms of modern science. Uh, so one is a sort of slightly pre or early modern science Mars and one is a modern science Mars. Uh, but both get combined with different other concepts. This, the Martian Chronicles, is different in as much as though it trades on a sword and planet Mars idea. Uh, it's ultimately really very explicitly a didactic and um, poignant and satiric uh, take on humanity. It's very explicit about that. All books are about humanity <laughs> at some level uh you're you know you're, the dictionary is about humanity and all sci-fi um is at its in its origins and core at some level speculative and and self-reflective on humanity but this is explicitly so this is very much a what would happen if these people from earth went to the stars what kinds of people would live in the stars and how would they be like us or not um and he explores over it's about 300 pages in the current harper voyager they're really nice uh, liveries on these ones i've got some matching other ones um in the same style uh, but he he over 300 pages and a number of linked but not consecutive stories some have share characters some don't um sometimes they actually almost seem to be addressing very slightly different situations a bit like uh, Kim, I, yeah i think it is actually this kim stanley robinson has written stories on different marses uh, not just the Mars of the Mars trilogy, he's written short stories for that, but other Mar ideas of Mars. And there's thing here where you can sometimes tell that as this collection of stories was written, um, he was just exploring a different idea, and it gels into the rest of the uh, book in one sense, and it's particularly more coherent uh, the later the book goes. Or, or perhaps a different way to put it is, coherence makes sense when you understand, it becomes more coherent when you understand what he's trying to do with the bits that seem jarring with the other bits. Uh, but it's a kind of set of linked stories, um, and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought there were a couple of big things to point out. Bradbury is simultaneously, sometimes literally simultaneously, but you know, in the same book at the same kind of time, he is eerie, he is poignant and moving, and he is uh, cynically funny. Uh, it's an interesting combination that he seems cynical, but he also really loves people. Um, and that doesn't that in one story that may not come across as much as in another story, but his deep sympathy for humans uh, is is real. But there is also the cynicism about what we would do if we went to the stars. Would we escape our problems? Well, no. Uh, we would meet ourselves in the stars. Um, there's some pretty obvious references to other things going on or that have gone on. The colonization of America and um, and the treatment of the Native American population. Um, there is a whole chapter set in Mississippi, I think, but just in the in in the modern world of this, around 2000. This was written in 1951, so in 2000, in Mississippi, um, as as segregation is still being unravelled, uh, what happens to the population there? As suddenly you can go and settle on Mars. Um, there's uh, questions about how war works, about technology about how we deal ethically and morally with these things and sometimes that is satiric and cynical and sometimes it's quite touching um, and uh, sometimes it's even a little bit redemptive and so yeah I think there is he, he is not 
the reason he is not like lots of modern authors, um, he is perhaps like some, uh, in that there is a directness to him that you get in some modern politically minded authors. But he's not politically minded in the way we think, at least. Um, he is, but he isn't. Uh, but he's direct like some modern authors. But he has a very distinctive voice which is not typical of lots of modern sci-fi authors. Um, he is uh, a prophet in the wilderness, uh, crying out. He writes very much like a guy who started work in the, thir in the 50s and 60s, uh, really, as well. Uh, he's not New Wave, he's just at the back end of that um, kind of first journalistic sci-fi generation. He's also often a really beautiful writer. Uh, this is out of context and so it shouldn't spoil it too much, but here's just a, a very nice paragraph. And then the fire balloons blew away and were gone, and he was like a child on his knees, tears streaming from his eyes, crying to himself, Come back! Come back! And at any moment, Grandfather might lift him and carry him upstairs to his bedroom in a long-gone Ohio town. Uh, there's a tonality and a style of, of a particular era, but which translates really well, which um, the clauses are really well balanced, the imagery is very distinct, and there, every story has one of those lines, even in the stories that are very cynical and satiric, and in the stories that are more um, quiet or more sympathetic, there are many of them. So yeah, that's that's two things are, I really like about it. There's not really criticism is is a hard thing to put when you think, well, did it accomplish what it wanted? Was it the book it set out to be? And the answer is yes, I think so. Um, I think the fact that there is no single character you track with. And the fact that they're all set of characters, there's no single plot that you track with except the grand theme of the colonisation of Mars over 27 years or whatever it is. Um, I think because of that, um, you, it's, it's better digested almost as short stories that you then connect in your head rather than like going into it thinking, man, I'm looking forward to this new Ray Bradbury novel all about Mars. Right, great. You need to have the right perspective on that. Um, I think... Uh, he, he his direct tone will not gel well with everyone um, necessarily it's something I don't always like in fact I think he is winsome enough that it worked for me but not, not everyone will like it to the same uh, degree and uh, they may, they may like their sci-fi more subtle um, but uh, as I say for other people maybe that would be a, a, a benefit um I Basically, I really liked it. I thought it was a really interesting way of using Mars explicitly as a reflection of Earth, of saying, what are we like? Um, if we were on another planet, what would happen? Um, and the answers are not all negative. There is, de but there is definitely a satiric vein in there, a kind of self-critical vein. Uh, but there are, you know, there are interesting things about how many things would work positively and negatively um, about the um, the way we would build, about the way we might interact with alien cultures. Oh, which is, of course, obviously partly a reflection by Bradbury on how we interact with other humans uh, now who are different to us. Uh, but I think it also has a degree of genuine speculation about how different another culture might be. There are a couple of ep episodes like that in here. Certainly the fire balloons is a good one. Um, so is uh, the off season. They're both very good examples of some of the ways we think uh, about uh, and uh, there's an early chapter too, actually. Um, what's it called? Uh, is it the the, uh, the moon be still as bright? I think. Um, those ones all do somewhat genuinely speculate on what happens if we met a culture who is startlingly different to us, uh, who really dealt with lots of things differently, who might even therefore at literally be aliens from other planets. Uh, but yeah, so that is my thought on the Martian Chronicles. Well worth a read if you um, are interested in a a playful, thoughtful, poignant, nicely written, episodic sort of sci-fi about Mars um, and really about us. Uh, that's that's my recommendation. If you have read it, tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>